In this video, we're going to look at the permanent installation of a Simbel system here at St. Mary's in Tilston. It's my local tower. We've been doing some work in the belfry. We've repainted the frame. And for the last few weeks, we've been using a pop-up simulator. Uh, but now it's time to install sensors onto all of the bells and also put in the wiring for the power. And then we're going to do a complete setup on able and virtual belfry so that we match the striking of the real bells with those on the simulator so uh, before it starts to rain i think we'd better get inside and get started right we're here in the ringing chamber of st mary's uh, we have a ground floor ring and we have quite a long draft up to the belfry uh, just the initial run to the clock room as you can see is about uh, 30 32 feet we then have another eight feet of the clock room and then we have the belfry above that all wooden floors so what we're going to do is i'm going to get some equipment out get the cymbal system out that we're going to install and then we're going to do some basic tests here in the ringing room before we go up into the belfry it will save us time up there and, and when we get up there should we have any issues then at least we can be sure that the transmitters and the receiver are all working correctly before we start so i'm going to go and get my laptop and the sensors that we're going to install and we'll do a little bit of testing here before we go up into the belfry right i've got all of the parts out for the installation uh, so we've got our laptop which has virtual belfry on it we have a single receiver we have six transmitters one for each bell we've got a battery pack we have our wireless hardware installation guide we've also got our reflective strips these are what we're going to put onto the bell wheel to detect uh, the movement and then we've got the actual installation bits that we're going to use so we've got uh, a reel of cable this is standard 0.2 millimeter uh, bell wire multi-core copper wire um, it's not expensive uh, this is 25 meters of it that's more than enough to do what we want to do uh, in the belfry now we're going to make up our own cables, so we need some uh, cable connectors and these consist of a uh, male and female connector and they have screw terminals on the other side so that we can uh, connect these to the end of the cables that we make up. Uh, we have some splitters. Now, these are purchase ones. Now, you don't have to buy them. You can make your own using the cable and then connecting multiple cables into, uh, into one of the connectors or into a piece of chocolate block. But to be honest, these are really inexpensive and you can get, this is a, a one to four, so one input, four outputs. You can get them one to two, one to six, one to eight. Um, if you don't want to make up your own cables, you can also buy ready-made cables. This is a three meter one, uh, simple male to female, and then you can just literally take your uh, multi-way adapters and plug them in and off you go. But I want to uh, have as little cable as possible showing, so consequently I'm going to actually make the cables themselves. Uh, we have a power supply that we're going to uh, potentially use upstairs in the belfry. We have power in the belfry that has a switch uh, down here. Uh, so if this will actually fit in the weatherproof housing, then I might use that. Uh, alternatively, it will be the battery pack. Uh, we then have to hold the cable onto the frame. Now. We have a metal frame, which is very useful uh, because we can actually use magnets. And what I've done, I've got some of these uh, self-adhesive little um, uh, tie wrap holders. And what I've done is I've actually put some neodymium magnets. I hope you can see that uh, on the back of the connector uh, or the 
uh, mount and then what I should be able to do then is just click those onto the bottom of the frame and they'll hold the cables uh, quite happily and we've got obviously the tie wraps that we'll need to put through these um, we've got a small electrical screwdriver which will be used to put the uh, to connect the cables into the uh, little end connectors and a pair of snips so that's everything that we need so what we want to do first is to test that all of these transmitters are working and that the receiver is working. Uh, what I've done on the transmitters is I've actually put uh, magnetic strips on the back of these. So again, we can just click those to the frame. You could use tie wraps and tie wraps to the frame or hook and loop. Um, because we have a metal frame, I think the, uh, uh, the magnetic option is, is a good one. So first of all, we have to check our receiver and we just make sure that all the switches uh, are in the off position. Uh, there's a marker on the top here which says on and we need to make sure that all of them are uh, away from that. So they should all be the same way. The switches on the transmitter and the receiver do different things. There are uh, full instructions and information in the installation guide but for what we're doing it's just a standard installation we're not using a repeater or anything like that so this just needs to be uh, standard and then we have to set up our transmitters one for each bell now when you take the back off a transmitter again you've got the same block now, if you don't do anything with the switches, these will be bell number one. However, the first uh, switch one, two, three, and four can be used to set the bell number. So if this is bell number one, we flick down switch number one like that, and that should uh, quite happily send out the number one signal. And then we go to number two, and for that one, we put switch number two down, like that, and so on. So number three, we put down two and one. Number four will be just switch number three. Number five will be switches number three and one and six will be switches number three and two so they are now set to individual bell numbers now when you get them very often what i'll do is i'll actually set them up for you and we'll put a, a small number sticker uh, on here uh, but it, that's uh, not permanent so at the end of the day you can change a transmitter to send anything you want so now we have Virtual Belfry running on here. What we want to do is to plug in our receiver and then we're gonna test each of these one by one so that we can ensure that they all work. So to do that, we plug our receiver into a USB slot and we make sure that we get some flashing lights on here. I'll just show you that again. Uh, so as you plug it in, you will get a number of flashes oh, there it goes and now we have to just tell the software which USB port we've plugged it into now on virtual belfry uh, if we go to the sensors menu on the left hand side so it's this one here uh, we can see everything is blank so we're setting up something that's new so if we click the configure button and we first of all can set up a new group and we'll call this Tilston. So it's going to be used here. And then we can put in the bell sensors here. So we can say we want a new sensor and we're going to call it bell number one or we could call it treble. Then we have to set the type of sensor that it is. 
and this is going to be a generic data interface. So all the Symbol units are a generic data interface. Now, we then come down to port. Now, this is the probably the only bit which potentially you could get wrong. So what we're going to do is if we go to our settings and go to device manager. If we look down device manager here, you should find under port common LPT, there will be one here which says USB serial CH340 and then it will say COM number. And the COM number that you have is the number that you need to select here. So we know now it's COM3, communications port 3, that means. So what we can do is we can double click it on the left and it will insert COM3 into the port number. We then have to tell it what to look for. Now, bell number one, you look for number one. Bell number two, you look for number two. Three is three and so on. So this is bell number one. So we want signal number one. And we want to say sound the bell on one signal and there's only one signal per stroke. On some uh, setups, you can have two sensors, one for at each end, and then you could potentially do it as signal number uh, one of two. But for us, it's one of one. And then we have to say, wait for so many milliseconds before sounding the bell. Now, the reason that this is there is that we have one sensor and the reflective strip is at the position where the bell is hanging face down. Um, and we then have a certain time during the swing from the time it sees that uh, strip to the point at which we get the uh, strike of the bell. And these are calculated in virtual belfry in milliseconds. Now, at the moment, we don't know what that is. Uh, we'll do the setup when we come back down after we have installed all the sensors. But so we'll just put in there, wait for one millisecond, and then it says, after a signal, ignore other signals for. Now, that just stops it. If it sees two signals um, by accident or sends two signals, you can tell it to ignore them for a little while. I usually set that to 50. Uh, there are some uh, clever things you can do by setting that to 800. So things like ringing a bell up and showing chiming, but won't worry about that. So ignore signals for 50 milliseconds and then there's two corrections here, one for hand stroke and backstroke for when you're using the program to analyze real ringing. And this is where you could put in what would you perceive as odd struckness uh, within your bells. We're not going to worry about those. So we can just literally click OK. And we've now got bell number one and the COM ports three and then all the other settings here. Now, we need to set that uh, for all of them. Uh, so I will quickly do that. So bell number two, com three, signal two. Okay, so we've now got uh, all of our six bells in there, uh, all of them on COM3. So what we can do now is click close and the use sensors button is now active. Now, when we push the use sensors button again, we should see a flash of the light as it initiates. Okay, and now it's ready to receive a signal. It's just sitting there. So what we'll do is we'll take our first sensor, we'll use the battery pack, turn it up, plug it in. Oops. And after a few seconds, it will uh, enable itself. And then we should be able to take one of our uh, reflective strips and 
move it in front and we should see a corresponding flash from the and get it to stand up there we go so we now want to just see a corresponding flash and it's saying it's receiving a signal from this sensor all right so that's quite happy we don't know what it is at this point we can then go to the next one we can do exactly the same thing and we should see a flash from the sent from the receiver which we're doing you can see it's flashing here now if you have one which doesn't flash and it's at this range then you need to check the switches inside make sure that the they are set correctly and that they're fully engaged sometimes you might have to flick it back and forth just to make sure it's fully engaged so that's number three that's working number four that's also got a flash five that's got working fine and finally number six right so we've got connection between the sensor the transmitters and the receiver for all of our uh, six transmitters so so far so good if you look in the installation guide you'll find that there is a section on installation and using uh, the what's called setup and installation mode and what we've done on the transmitters if you're having trouble positioning one in the belfry then if you just open the uh, the transmitter and put on switch number seven so you can see it's like that so switch number seven is now on uh, you do that without power on it and then put the power on what you'll find is that as soon as it starts up you can see now that the receiver is flashing continuously or every three quarters of a second and this will create a bong so what you can do then is you can have that down here with a, a reasonable sized amplifier on it or something that you can hear in the belfry or have somebody down here who can shout to you and you can move the aerial around until you get a regular strike every time that light flashes that's set up an installation mode and can be really useful if you particularly if you have uh, things like a heavy oak frame or you've got uh, big thick floors and you, you're just not quite getting the signal through so we put that in as an option on switch number seven uh, so that uh, you can uh, check and test don't forget to turn it off it's uh, a bit disconcerting when you have set up and you turn everything on and everything is sending down uh, signals all the time so those are all of our sensors uh, we have set up and tested that we've got a connection the receiver is working uh, correctly we've got the flash so now what we need to do is to go upstairs and install all of these transmitters and the cabling uh, in the belfry so and then we can come back down and actually do the setup of the bells and they're striking themselves okay so uh, let's go up into the belfry Right, we're up here in the belfry of St. Mary's. You can see we have a metal frame. And as I said before, what I've done is on the back of these transmitter units, I've uh, glued some uh, magnetic strips, some neodymium magnets. Now, very often what you'll see uh, on an installation is that the transmitters are mounted on top of the frame like this. Now, that's absolutely fine but what it does mean is that when you go and climb on the frame and you're walking around on top which is uh, quite common when you're you're doing your checks then these can be in the way and the aerials are actually quite delicate in that there is a, a hinge on the end here 
and that can quite easily get broken. Now, obviously, you know, we can send you spares and whatever, but realistically, if you put them out of the way in the first place, then, you know, I think it's a better option. So what I'm gonna do on this installation is I'm going to actually mount them underneath on the side of the frame like that. So it can still see the wheel, so we can put our reflective strip onto here, uh, and the bell's in the down position. It doesn't matter where the strip and the sensor is, you know, it could be up here if you wanted to make a bracket. Um, but I think that's a good place to put it because it means that it's out of the way, you can walk around on top of the frame as much as you want, you've just got to be careful when you're climbing down into a bell pit that you don't actually kick them. So the, this is bell number two, so we can fit that onto there and we can do exactly the same thing uh, for bell number three. We get the right sensor, which I've set up. Yep, that's bell number three. So we can, in the same way, mount that on that point on the frame. And we can do the same for the six here. Uh, we can't do the same for the one because really I don't want it on the end of the frame. I'd rather have them all on the inside. So what we'll do is we'll actually mount that one on to the other side of the frame, similar sort of uh, position, but there is a, a strut coming down on the far side and we'll mount on the back of that. Then we've got four and five at the back and we'll mount uh, those on the inside as well. So once we've decided on the position of the transmitters, then we have to decide what we're going to do with the cable. Now, we can run the cable around the frame, we can run it uh, up on top of the frame if you've got the, the sensors up here, but again, you want it to be as out of the way as you can, you want it to look neat and tidy, uh, and you also want it so that it's secure, so it can't catch in any of the uh, moving parts that you have within a belfry. So what we're going to do, as I, I think I explained, is we're going to take our little connectors which have magnets on them, these here, and we can actually put these onto the frame and they will sit there on the side or underneath and actually hold the wires and what I'm aiming to do is to actually put in the wires underneath the frame so run them along the the bottom so that nobody uh, can see them and we're heading over uh, to this corner here where we have our uh, mains power connection uh, or we can have it it'll have a plug on it so we could also use the battery at that point so the first thing that I need to do uh, will be to start measuring from this point to wherever my first transmitter is going to be and then just working out what splitters I need uh, to actually loop it to the next one and then I need to take one to the back which can then feed the two there. So my feeling at the moment is I'm going to come from here underneath up on top of this strut here uh, probably on the side and then up to this transmitter I'll put a uh, two-way connection underneath which will go along and then into another two-way which will feed up to this one or in fact maybe even I'll put a four-way and then I can run two connectors one to this one and one straight the, under the frame to go to the back to feed the two there another two splitters there and then up here and down to feed the one at the back. So I've got a bit of measuring, cutting and making of cables to do. Uh, to make a cable, you're simply going to use the connectors that uh, I showed you before with the two um, screw terminals. One thing I would point out on the connectors themselves, it's very important you get them the right way around. Polarity is critical uh, on the system. If you, you, if you have the polarity incorrect, then what you will end up doing is blowing the transmitters. 
they don't like being powered backwards now on each of the connectors there is I think you probably see this if I can there is a positive and a negative terminal if I can get that in the center there and just get the light right and it's marked on the side here just underneath in the plastic one says plus and one says minus now with your with the cable you have uh, I use black and red so it's pretty easy to uh, to see which it is so you have to decide which one's which I make the red the positive and I make the black the negative and when those are pushed in they will be that way round like that so you've got red on this side black on the other but just make sure and double check all of them that you've got them the right way because if you get them the wrong way you will actually blow the transmitter okay so uh, I'm going to do a bit of measuring and cutting and uh, we'll see you all in a moment Right, it's been a couple of hours and I've put all of the cabling around the bottom of the frame and fitted the transmitters onto all of the bells. If we just have a look now, you can see that we've got the transmitters here on the front side of the frame. On the treble here, we've actually mounted it on the upright on the back because that was the easiest uh, position from uh, a cabling point of view and then over at the back you can see on the right hand side we've got the five and the four on the left that's actually been put on upside down because the sensors are only on one side of the transmitter units so consequently uh, we have to mount it uh, upside down so that they're on the right side so what we now need to do is to put the stickers onto the wheels these are the reflective stickers that we provide one for each wheel and we do that simply by taking one of the self adhesive stickers and if you look at the edge of the sensor when it's powered on and you can see it's powered on at the moment as the reflector passes in front of it you'll see that there is a a brief red flash you can see that there so what we need to do when the bell is down we need to be covering the sensor so that red light needs to be on so if we move it to the point where the red lights on and then move it across to the wheel we can then stick the uh, reflective strip in place and you should see that the red light's on. When we move the bell, that red light goes off. So you can see that it's detecting the uh, reflective strip as it passes, which is what we want. Now you'll see at the top here, I've put the uh, aerial out to the side this is to try and give it as good a view as it can downwards uh, through the floor here down to the ringing room if it was up against the metal then that would actually stop the signal so we want to have it out not so that anything can actually hit it so if, make sure that the bells or the wheel couldn't hit it uh, and make sure that it's got a good view uh, down to the ringing room so all of the cabling is pretty neat uh, I'm very pleased with it and I think now what we need to do is to go back down to the ring room and what we'll do is we'll just make sure that everything is working and then we can set up each of the bells for their particular delay time 
because remember we only have one sensor so as the bell swings to the up position as the sensor passes we then have a length of time before the strike happens and what we're going to do we have all the bells open at the moment we're going to ring uh, well ring one of them and get that set up the principle is the same for all of them uh, so we'll ring one up we'll set its delay time so that it absolutely uh, matches the real characteristics of the bell and then I can set all the others up and we'll be about finished so let's go back down to the uh, ringing room and get started with the setup right we're back in the ringing room we've got the rope for our number two bell is uh, is down and ready the bell is currently uh, not rung up it's it's down as well and we have our laptop here with virtual belfry running uh, if we just now enable the sensors remember whenever you enable the sensors to look for the flashing of the blue light here which just says that it's enabled and working so if we go to the sensors menu and select use sensors we can see the flash here and we've got all of the bells active even though we're only going to use bell number two uh, to actually do this setup. So first of all we want to make sure that we've got uh, a connection between the belfry and the ringing room and we can do that simply by pulling the bell and we get the flash on the receiver and we get a corresponding bong from the software. So now what we need to do is to ring up the bell and then we can start looking at the timings and the delays and making sure the striking is correct. So I'll quickly ring this up. Remember the bell is open. Okay, so the bell's now up. Now if you remember when we set up the uh, sensors in the first place in the software, we set the delay time to one millisecond. Well, obviously it is going to be more than that. So I recommend that we start somewhere around 200 or 250 milliseconds. So to do that, if we click configure, select bell number two, select edit, and we need to put in a wait for time. So let's say 250 milliseconds. We click OK and we close. And you'll see the lights flash again because it resets the uh, communications port. And now what we can do is we can see whether the number two bell strike is at exactly the same time as that on the simulator. If it isn't, then we can adjust it either a little bit earlier or a little bit later to suit. So if we just listen to both hand stroke and back stroke. That's actually not, not bad for a first try. Uh, I'm actually going to make it just a little bit later but not much so if we go to two and edit again and we'll just make it 260 I think that the uh, simulator was a little bit early so we'll wait for it wait for the flashes on the receiver and then we can ring again And I think that's pretty close as far as uh, setting up the delay on this particular one. So it's 260 milliseconds. 
So now we basically can go and do exactly the same procedure on all the other bells in the tower. And when we finish, we will have a setup that's as close as we can get it uh, to that for uh, normal open ringing. So now, of course, we also have ABLE. So we want to look at how to do the setup on ABLE and set the delays. So if we remember 260, because uh, that's the delay time, if we now close Virtual Belfry, and we could now open ABLE, and we have the ABLE 5 bell setting. With ABLE, we go to Options, and we select External Bells. And here we have a completely empty display. So what we need to do here is to set the port number. If we remember the port number is three, we can use discover ports here and it will tell us what ports we have on the machine that are active. And we've got three and six, well we know it's three. So we set the port to three for all of them so that we are ready to set up all six bells. And now bell number two, we set it to data. The options are uh, for other types of connections. We're just using a straight serial port. And we have to map to a particular bell. So if we map to, in fact, do one-to-one -one mappings. There we go, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have to do the sensor delays. So first of all, if we click OK and just save that, make sure that the receiver flashes again. Then we go back to our external bells and we can go to sensor delays. And if we select bell number two, now the important thing here is the strike. This is in a hundredth of a second. Virtual belfry is a thousandth of a second. So we need to be uh, to make sure that we work in hundredths. So bell number two, if we set that to 26, that should be 260 milliseconds. We need to make sure that we've got the box checked here that says ABLE applies the de delays. And if we now click OK, If I ring bell number two, hopefully we will be just about in the same place with Abel. And there we go, that's Abel set up with exactly uh, the same bell, the same settings, so it's 260 milliseconds, and we can now go and uh, use ABLE on bell number two, but of course we're going to go around and set the delays on all the others. So I'll get on with that and then I'll come back at the end and we'll just have a, uh, a wrap up of this installation video. Right, so we've got to the end of the installation. I've been round and done all of the delay timings for all of the bells here. And interestingly, here at St. Mary's, our treble has a time of 245 milliseconds, and the tenor has a time of 370 milliseconds. So there is a, just over uh, 100 milliseconds between our lightest and our heaviest bell here. A couple of points from the installation. Uh, the magnets onto the tie wrap, um, sticky tie wrap holders uh, work very well most of the time, but on a couple of occasions I did have to actually use the adhesive backing um, onto the frame itself. That's particularly where we had several cables running together and the weight of the cables was just too much for the magnets. If you find you have problems with getting the signal from the belfry to the ringing chamber. I mean, as I say, we've got about 30, 30, 33 foot uh, draft here to the first to the clock chamber, then go above that, another eight, 10 feet to the belfry. 
Um, one of the things you may have to do on the receiver is to add a power supply. So any 12 volt, standard 12 volt DC power supply, again, be really careful of the polarity. If you swap them round, you will blow the receiver. Um, plug that in, that will enable the receiver to run at maximum uh, capability. Some laptops just don't provide enough power coming out of the USB port to, to drive it fully, but most newer ones are absolutely fine. Uh, you can also, of course, use a, a second battery pack if you have two. Uh, that can also plug in to the same spot. So that's basically it. If you have any questions, there is basic troubleshooting in the back of the manual. Uh, if you have any general questions or even specific ones about your tower, if you want to send me a message, send me some photographs if uh, applicable, uh, I'll help you as much as I can to get your installation working. So that's the end of this installation video. Uh, thanks for watching, hope it's been useful, and we'll see you all very soon.